people would say that Brisbane was like a big country town in those days. And I remember myself working on the Moonlight State and staying in the Tower Mill Hotel uh, just on the, the fringe of the CBD. And you can walk down Queen Street through the city at night and there'd be nobody there. You know, you can't do that anymore. People said that, that Sir Joe Bjorki Peterson was uh, a great man for business and uh, he got things happening. I actually thought it wasn't so progressive. I thought that it was, it was uh, pretty much stuck in the, in the 1960s. But I did announce at one stage that thank heavens this stuff that was appearing in the Brisbane press uh, was not uh, going on in my electorate. And one of the supervising police asked to see me. And he came to see me and he said, see this item in the local newspaper? He said, don't say that again. And I said, why? He said, because it is. It's going on here. He said, there is a sergeant of police who was collecting money from various sites on a Friday afternoon, putting it into an envelope and putting it through the post box of the police commission at three o'clock on a Friday afternoon, every after Friday afternoon. Money. To a degree, significant degree, the public was complicit because it's not as if we were all that opposed to corruption. Um, a lot of people think that it just oils the wheels of industry, that, uh, that red tape is, is too um, constrictive, uh, that sometimes you need to find a way through the system. And for example, you know, if you got a speeding fine and you, you needed your license, then you had to find a way to, uh, to buy your eye out of it. Uh, a lot of people saw benefit in that. I met the, the sergeant who was doing the job and he, when I was introduced to him, he was full of booze. He was full, full. Yeah, as well he might have been. I mean, the whole thing was, uh, was a massive problem. Under Lewis, it was a, a massive issue. To me, it felt that corruption wasn't just a moral issue. It was a, it was a practical one and a pragmatic one as well. It was, it was wrong for people to be corrupt, but it was also bad in that, in that it meant that unworthy people were triumphing. That was what was essentially wrong with it. And that was what was essentially wrong with Queensland. Lewis had been appointed there and he, he was not even on the short list of reason, reasonable people. I'd seen lots of reporters have a go at the Queensland corruption story and fail. Uh, so when a police officer from the Australian Bureau of Crime Intelligence in Canberra spoke to me about what he thought was a serious corruption issue in, in Queensland, I initially uh, thought, oh no, not another Queensland crook story. You know, they never work, you know, people get burned. Uh, the witnesses get run out of town. The coalition government at the time sought the advice of Scotland Yard and Scotland Yard's advice was don't appoint this man, he's corrupt. And so still he was appointed. The government had stomped on local journalists for daring to raise these allegations and they would say and the police would say every time you talk about a crooked cop you know that uh, affects the reputation of all the good cops who are out there uh, defending us and protecting us and they were right to a to a significant degree but but that sort of thinking shouldn't have protected the bad ones and i think it did <laughs>